Hey everybody, welcome to the second video on the production function. In this video, guys, we're graphing. We're graphing the production function and the marginal product curve. Now here's the thing, guys, it's the second video. The first video, we looked at changes in marginal returns, a concept central to understanding the production function. Now, there's a few key concepts I want to go back over. Number one, big thing when it comes to marginal returns is we're talking about the short run. And in the short run, in microeconomics, guys, we have variable cost and fixed cost. That's so important. In the long run, everything is variable. But in the short run, we have variable cost and fixed cost. And here's what we were doing with marginal returns. We're looking at the change in output that we got when we added one more variable input to a set of fixed inputs, okay? Now, a go-to variable input for students, I think, should be something like labor, okay? So when you just think conceptually, what we're talking about, we're talking about variable input, labor's a go-to. As far as fixed cost is concerned, I think the go-to conceptually is the facility size. And so here's what we were doing is we were adding one more labor, one more labor, one more labor to a set of fixed inputs like the facility size was not able to change. And here's what we saw, guys, as we added another labor and another labor, at first, the rate of change in output was increasing, and that was called increasing marginal returns. But as you added more and more inputs, eventually you got to a situation that you had constant changes in output, okay? Constant changes in output, which is called constant marginal returns. And if you kept on adding uh, variable inputs, okay, one more, one more, one more, remember the size of the facility is fixed. You're going to get decreasing or diminishing marginal returns. You can get decreasing rate and change in output. And if you kept on having variable inputs, you would even get to a place that you got negative changes, okay? You got negative changes in output. You got negative marginal returns. So again, I think if we really embrace that marginal returns is a short run concept, we're changing variable inputs, we're adding variable input to a set of fixed inputs like the facility size itself, it starts to make conceptual sense that, okay, yeah, yeah, we get increasing marginal returns and then constant, then decreasing, and maybe even negative at some point, okay? Now, I go back over that because that's key to understanding these curves, okay? So let's get to it. Let's start graphing the curves. Let's graph the production function. Now, remember, at first, we're going to get increasing marginal returns and increasing um, rate of change in output, right? The, the rate of change in output is going to increase at first. Now, how do I show that? Not with a linear line, right? That would be, a, I kind of go ahead and give it away. That would be constant marginal returns. Increasing marginal returns, what would that look like? I need my rate of change, right? My slope to be increasing. So there we go. See that right there? Some people might call that convex, okay, or convex upward, okay? But you can see, hey, as we're adding those labors right there, we're getting greater and greater and greater gains in output, right? If I just cut this in half right here and just say, okay, that was just two laborers, right? Which is probably not the best thing to do because it would be kind of stilted, but that's okay. Just kind of conceptually really quickly is look at that change in output. At first, pretty small. The second labor, a much bigger change in output, okay? So again, that is just a conceptual way we're trying to show the production function to show those increasing marginal returns. Now, eventually you get constant marginal returns, okay? So now the line does turn linear, right? So it's going to do that at first, and then it kind of gets that little linear aspect to the curve, okay? Constant marginal returns. Then eventually as you add even more laborers, right, we're getting further out to the right, we're adding more and more laborers, we're going to get diminishing or decreasing marginal returns. Now we're going to get this thing that's called concave downward. Okay, I'm not so worried if you understand that term concave downward. I'm going to draw that again. And think that was the prettiest of things. Okay, but there we go. Something like that, right? I just want you to see that rate of change is decreasing, okay? Decreasing rate of change. Remember, guys, when we talk about rate of change, we're talking about slope, right? Rise over run. We're not getting near as much rise here, okay, as we as as we add laborers, right? And adding laborers is running, right? Here, as we're adding those laborers, we're getting a lot more rise, okay? So increasing slope, constant slope, decreasing slope. Now, I'm going to put a little mark right there. And yes, you could even get negative. I don't think it's all that important, but you get the negative. So I just make a dash. The reason I make a dash is you should never hire that laborer where you get negative marginal returns, okay? So I'm actually going to get rid of that. just wanted you to see it for a second. And hey, there, that curve right there is our production function. So now we know how, how to draw it. Again, it's embracing that 
thing that we did in video one, increasing marginal returns, constant marginal returns, decreasing marginal returns. That's what that function is supposed to be showing. Now, perhaps even more important, the marginal product curve, right? Marginal product is basically just graphing marginal returns and what we just talked about, okay? So you can even see on the vertical axis, some people might just label this marginal product. Okay, I like to say what we're actually doing here is we're looking at the change in output per labor, okay? Very, you know, explicit here, our change in output per labor, okay? So marginal product curve. So as we draw this, we want to show what at first? That, hey, at first, what's happening to our change in output per labor? It's increasing, right? Marginal return. So that marginal product curve is going to have to go up. Um, I'm going to draw that one more time. It's a little bit steep. doesn't really matter. But there we go. Something like that, right? Getting it going up. The first one I drew was fine, too, but just all I need is like that curve going up. And really, the, the rate of change in the slope right there, not a big deal. I just want to show, hey, our marginal product's going up. That's our increasing marginal return. It has to do with this one right here, okay? Now, here's our constant marginal returns. Well, how do I show that with the marginal product graph, right? My change in output is going to be constant as I add laborers. If my change in output is constant as I add laborers, it's going to be a flat line. It's going to be horizontal, just like that. And then, of course, I get my decreasing. And what's so important about this one is, yes, that curve is now going down. And what I, you know, like to always ask students is, as, as we're right here on the curve, what's happening to total output? And it is so important they realize, hey, total output is still going up. Even though the marginal product curve is going down, total output is still going up, okay? Just, it's just going up at a decreasing rate. It's just going up at a decreasing rate. Now, eventually, that marginal product curve does hit the horizontal axis. And that's kind of a really important thing to always kind of take note of when you're doing any marginal line, okay? When that marginal line hits that horizontal axis, okay, this is marginal product, you have mat, you are at your maximum total output, okay? So assume that that dot right there goes along with that you know, where I put that little tick mark right up there on the production function. Remember, it started to go down after that, right? So there's my maximum output. So important. And yes, this curve could, I'm just going to dash it a little bit here, right? It could even go negative, but we should never hire any laborers where our marginal product is, is negative, like we've already said. So let me kind of erase that, get rid of that arrow right there, and label that my marginal product curve. Okay, so there we've got it, guys. we got the production function and the marginal product curve, both graphs are showing increasing marginal returns, constant marginal returns, and decreasing or diminishing marginal returns. They're both showing it. Remember, what's different on this graph than this graph? On this graph, it's just total output on that vertical axis, just total output. Here, I've got my change in output per labor, okay? But guys, we're graphing the same exact thing in both graphs. I hope that made sense to you. We'll see you in the next video.